Sure. Welcome everyone to the March 21st, the year 2000, Town of Cape Elizabeth Planning Board meeting. First item on the agenda is discussion and approval of the minutes of the previous meeting, February 15th, the year 2000. Any comments, changes from board members? Mr. Parker. Motion to uh, accept the minutes as written. Thank you, Steve. Do I have a second? Second. Is there any further discussion of the minutes? Hearing none, all those in favor, please raise your right hand. Any opposed? Thank you. Correspondence received this week. Planning Commissioner's Journal, Winter of the Year 2000, Shoreland Zoning News of the Winter Year 2000. Sprawling into the Year 2000 article, a letter from P. Carlisle and Jane, June Eislin in regards to the Old Ocean House Road subdivision. Any comments from the board regarding this week's correspondence? Go on to the first item under old business. At our last workshop, we discussed the possibility of having a site walk on Saturday, March 25th of the year 2000 at 8 a.m. in the morning for a subdivision to be proposed in the area of 471 Old Ocean House Road. Members asked to consult their calendars at home. Are there any conflicts? Is everyone in general agreement that we'll still hold the site walk? And just for the public's information, we will hold a site walk on Saturday, March 25th at the site in the vicinity of 471 Old Ocean House Road beginning at 8 o'clock in the morning. And the public is invited. Um, where, where are we parking? On the road. On the road. Okay. Under new business, will the applicant for the town of Cape Elizabeth police and fire station site plans like to set up? We'd like to begin by just having the applicant give us a brief overview of the changes that came about, or if any, since the last workshop meeting. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Joe Hennessy. I'm here representing the town uh, uh, for host associates with the architects and engineers for the proposed police building and the fire uh, the modifications to the public works building to turn it into a firehouse. Basically, what I want to do is we'll briefly go over the project, and I have some elevations as well. The first thing to present is the site plan itself. The buildings are located directly off of Jordan Way, which is a, a, a roadway owned by the town that cuts from 77 down to the school area. The existing police building is in this area here, which has a firehouse, uh, the uh, garage in the front end of it, that exits, exits directly onto 77. And the existing building in orange here is the represents the uh, public works building. Uh, sometime towards the, the end of this year, it's anticipated the Public Works will move out of this into a new building uh, on uh, Gulf Crest Farms. When that happens, our goal is to turn this into a firehouse with a couple modifications. Uh, one is that there will be a small addition in the front end of about 200 and some square feet that will be used as a temporary dispatch and then ultimately as a, a, a backup dispatch and or an office area. On the back end is going to be a large training uh, room that will be built uh, on the back corner to fill in the L shape of that building. Uh, and then when this building is occupied, um, excuse me, when the renovations are complete, this building will become occupied, the existing police and fire building will be vacated, and when that happens, everybody moves over, this building will be demolished, and a new police building will be built on this site, encumbering basically the same footprint of the existing but squaring off the corners. The existing uh, public works building it, it will be built in two different phases. The first one is to convert the front end, add about a 270 square foot addition on the front end, which will become a temporary dispatch facility. By contract with the state, um, Cape Elizabeth is going to enter into an E911 contract to start commencing uh, activities uh, as of the end of June uh, this year. What we're trying to do is get that building up and running and capable to handle the E911 uh, activities as a dispatch center as early as possible so that this will be up and running before any demolition or anything happens over here. 
Um, so that there's a, an emphasis of trying to get this to, to happen as quickly as possible. When that is up and running, the existing dispatch will be uh, closed down. Uh, the police will still stay there temporarily until public works moves out. And then the police building, the police will temporarily move into the front half of public works area uh, with no modifications inside. We're just renaming some of the, the spaces from offices to uh, different activities. Um, after public works move, moves out, and in the meantime, the fire department will probably stay here uh, until we can make some renov renovations into the large portion of public works, which will then become the apparatus room for the firehouse. When that happens, uh, this building then will be totally vacated and uh, then the demolition can start. Um, the renovations to the existing building, which I'm not calling a firehouse, um, are limited to the two additions as I talked about. What we're trying to do is keep the architecture of that pretty invisible to what's there now. It's an existing split-faced concrete block, um, has a texture to it. Uh, we're going to use the same type of materials on the new additions uh, so that it blends in. The, fire, the barn part, the large part that is the apparatus room, the roof on that's in pretty good shape. We are going to change the garage door area so it's more in line with what a fire department needs. Right now there's two huge uh, overhead doors that the public works uses to get their snow plows and things like that out. To make it more accommodating to the fire department, we're going to be using uh, smaller doors, um, two 14-foot doors and one 24-foot door, so that it will be easier to get individual pieces of apparatus out depending on the emergency. We're also doing the same thing on the back end of the lot. Um, the landscaping around the building itself is pretty much the, staying the same way as it is today. Uh, we are taking a small area in the back that is now bituminous that we're closing in for a, a, a training room. Uh, the existing small training room that's in the center here will still stay in place uh, for the fire department. And this one will be added to increase uh, the fire department's capabilities to meet some of their needs for training. There's a small area in the existing building, which is now a maintenance bay. We're taking that, leaving the existing walls in place, but we're subdividing it, taking the lift out, putting a new floor in, subdividing that into a couple individual spaces to meet the demands of the fire department. Then the rest of the apparatus room is going to be upgraded. New finish on the floor, uh, new painting on the walls, uh, new paint on the walls, and then we're refinishing the ceiling uh, to uh, accommodate a much brighter and different type of function that's going on in there. The parking lot itself is being relined, uh, regraded to come in, in compliance with the ordinance, building two islands out here that do not exist, building another island in here, and we're providing for about 30 some cars back in the back end here to support the fire department both on an emergency basis and on a functional basis when people come back from a fire. The response team, mostly the way it works now, I think most of you are aware, that when there is an emergency, most of the people wind up going to, um, where, to the site of the emergency right from the very beginning. Um, only the people that are driving the trucks wind up coming here to take their vehicles. Uh, but after the, after the emergency, whatever it is, assuming it's a fire, then most of the firemen come back here to get cleaned up, change their gear, and then they bring their vehicles back here. So we've provided parking for that activity when it happens. Um, across the, the back end of the building here, there's approximately 20 foot between the existing building and the property line. We're leaving that uh, uh, as best we can with some new landscaping. There is going to be an emergency generator along here. Um, most likely it's sited right in this area here. That emergency generator is going to support this building and this building. Um, uh, and the rest of it is we'll probably be painting this existing wall. It's an existing concrete block that uh, we're not modifying, but we'll probably put a new coat of paint on it um, to uh, reduce the maintenance of the facility. There's also some corrugated siding from the roof line down about four feet that is the same depth of the existing superstructure, the trusses that support the roof. We're taking that off and put a, a semi-transparent uh, translucent material up there to get some daylight into the apparatus room so the firemen have additional uh, daylight and 
uh, a less need for artificial light when they're in there cleaning the trucks and preparing for uh, uh, whatever maintenance has to be done, the preparation to the equipment. Other than that, there's not too much activity going on uh, architecturally in that existing building. Coming across the, the front end, of, out towards um, Route 77, there's a small area uh, list that we're going to add some landscaping to that's between Jordan Way and the shopping center. We're trying to add some additional uh, landscaping in there, both to enhance the overall environment to the town center requirements and um, to, to enhance the, the two uh, buildings. The police building, when it starts, is going to be um, approximately 9,300 square feet. Um, its front edge will be in alignment to where the existing building is now, the existing uh, firehouse alignment. The, the foundations for that will line up with the existing. The back end, I don't know if you can see from where you're sitting, there's a dotted line in here. That represents, goes up to here, represents the existing footprint of the existing building. What we're trying to do is align the front end on this end, align the back end here, and then fill in the squares in between. Um, we're providing public visitor uh, parking along the street side of Jordan Way. Um, we had made several attempts to try to get this closer to the front end, but logistically we were concerned about emergency response for the fire trucks uh, when that became uh, necessary, that somebody may be pulling out of a parking space and be at risk of somebody coming around the corner. So we pulled all that parking back uh, probably 100 feet, 120 feet from the corner in order to reduce that risk. Uh, we have uh, handicapped parking, van parking, and then visitor parking. We then, by doing this, also enabled us to create a sloped sidewalk across here and up into the building so it becomes a sidewalk rather than a ramp so we don't need to uh, uh, encumber the handicap any more than, than possible. It'll be a little less than 5% slope, so it's not considered a ramp. We can come into the front end of the building. We have some new landscaping in here. Under the um, town center project that's under, it's still going on, I believe, we put a new sidewalk and a new espalade along the front here. We're putting a new radius in here, which actually reduces the overall width of Jordan Way, so it matches your town ordinance uh, requirements for its, its uh, width so that it makes it easier to come in here. It also provided a space for landscaping to help, again, to help in, uh, enhance the building itself. Uh, we're providing the new building, the new police building is going to be at the same level as the street at this point. So the sidewalk and into the floor line is basically at the same plane. There's about a six inch difference, but uh, in order to maintain proper drainage around the building, but in effect, this building and the sidewalk at this point are in the same plane. And that eliminates some of the needs for ramps and things like that for a handicap to get in, and get in and out of the building. In accordance with the town ordinance, we're trying to make sure that we provide some landscaping and a little plaza in the front end here. What we've done is created a small walkway with uh, concrete pavers that'll be an access to the building. It's approximately 20 to 30 feet wide and it's about 40 foot in depth. It has a small retaining wall on either side of it, um, but the sole purpose of that wall is to help define the space. And we've tried to keep that at about 18 inches high so it becomes a place to sit and gather. If you're gonna wait for somebody while they're in the building or something like that, if you're walking up and down the highway, it's a place to, to be able to sit. It's right at bench height. It's about two and a half feet, or two feet wide, so it, is, it should be a very comfortable space. Um, the center of the area is uh, going to be um, lawn, um, and then this orange area in here is where we anticipate a flagstone, I mean a, a flagpole with a little bit of a walk and access around it. As you go into the building, um, I don't know if, if you've had an opportunity to review the plans, but you come into a small vestibule. There's about a six foot deep porchway, uh, which I'll get into when we talk about the aesthetics of the building. A porch comes into a small storm vestibule, then into a lobby, and then the dispatch facility will be in here. At that point, this one will be shut down, and all the dispatch activities will take place in the police building. On the back end of the building, um, this represents the school property in here. This is a chain link fence. It's roughly eight feet high now, 
It was extended some time ago in order for, to reduce the, the risk of the kids kicking the balls and things like that over the fence. Uh, we're keeping that in place. We're not changing that at all. Uh, we're adding a little bit of more, more landscaping in here. We're regrading right out in front of the chain link fence to put new parking lot in for the police department. We've aligned their driveway so that it's directly across from the fire building so that each knows what activity is happening when they go pulling out on during an emergency response. And it provides uh, the parking in here exceeds what this building's requirements would be, um, but it also allows one or two spaces to be used for impound cars or something like that in the future. At one time, if you'll remember, we had discussed the, the, the potential for chain link fence around this and a gate at the front entrance way. Uh, we have retracted from that feeling that at this point that security is not as major importance as it was once considered. Uh, so this will be all bituminous paving. Um, the building itself then, this part is a small uh, garage, which is called a sally port uh, for the police so that they can bring somebody in, close the garage doors and secure, um, securely take somebody out of a patrol car before they have to take them inside the building. And it's out of sight of the public and especially the children to try and reduce the risk of what they may or may not see or hear. Um, the balance of the site, we are providing a, a lot of new landscaping, uh, some new trees, uh, both deciduous and conifers along um, the north side of the property. This existing property will be regraded. Uh, there's a new catch basin in the, this area here, which will bring, uh, which will handle most of the uh, water on this side of the property. Um, the I think the, the sidewalk itself is going to stay as, as is and sidewalk back for the students to go back to the school. There's a tremendous amount of activity on a daily basis up and down here. And we're keeping that all in place so that it's, it's a safe, easy way for the kids to get from uh, 77 back to the school. Is there any questions on the site plan? At this point, we'll need to keep all of our questions and discussion to whether or not the application is complete or not, and then we'll get into a general question and answer period on the overall application. Okay. Just as procedure for the board, again, we, before we can get into the general discussion of the application, we must have the application complete or incomplete, and we need to look at the discussion to that at that point. Any concerns or questions for the applicant in regards to completeness from board members? Could, uh, Go ahead, Nancy. Uh, could you address the partial on number six proposed building structures, road drivers, <laughs> And also uh, number 11, road, curb, bumper, sidewalk details. Yep. Um. Sorry. It's all right. <laughs> Could you read the, the statement back so that I can understand it? Number six. In Checklist. Uh, proposed building structures, roads, driveways, parking areas. Okay. You um, that partially. Okay, there's, there's two buildings involved. The existing police building is going to be demolished. Uh, we're going to then build a new 9,300 square foot uh, new facility in this area. Uh, the other building is an existing fire station. Um, I believe there's about 12, 12 to 15,000 square feet in that building. We're adding on to that 272 square feet in the front, uh, 2,152 square feet into the back. As uh, far as the roadways are concerned, we are reducing the overall width of Jordan Way, providing a new curb line, uh, additional parking across the front. Now, this is a new curb line here. This is an existing curb line that goes down across the side here. So we're bringing the front end in so it aligns with the street. We are adding parking 
we're, we're actually not adding, um, I don't know the square footage. I don't think we're adding any more macadam to the back end of the police department than that's already there. Most of the impervious surface already exists, but we are regrading what's there. Um, there's a hump in the, in the uh, due to ledge that's in there now that we're taking that out, lowering it down, reduce the uh, slope coming out of the driveway so that we can get out onto Jordan Way and come out in this direction. So we're providing new curbway in here, new sidewalk down along the side here, tying into the existing sidewalk. Basically on this stretch, there is no existing sidewalk. The kids walk out of the school now on a bituminous walkway, then they have to walk up the street part to get out onto 77. So we're providing now a much safer access to them. We're then providing a new uh, granite curb along in this radius and then along the front of the building here, across the parking and out to 77. We are not anticipating curb on this side of the street, but because we're, we're keeping that side to, uh, that's an existing alignment on that edge. Um, we're not changing the bituminous in the back other than reducing it by adding some uh, islands uh, there and in here and a small piece back in here. Um, but basically the impervious surface is about the same as it was, as it is today. Well, um, I'm not sure if I answered your question. I'm, I'm not sure you addressed. Uh, the applicant has submitted elevations of the buildings. However, there are areas where the exterior materials have not been identified. These include floor to ceiling type windows on the front elevation of the police station and materials on the gable ends where the asphalt window label refers to the roof and not the Okay, I think I can't, I can't address those. I haven't yet, so. Um, this represents uh, the front of the police building. This is the facade that faces towards um, 77. The, the item in question was, is this area in here. This is the front door where you see this uh, figure entering. This is intended to be a small storm vestibule it's roughly five to six feet back from the facade of this and, and these columns. So we're creating a little porch across the front. This window in here is intended to be, and this one also, is intended to be from the ceiling line down to about two feet off the floor as all glass. It's fixed window to get daylight into that lobby and also to give some security to the police area. Um, and there was a question, I think a concern, as to whether that was window or if that was glass block. And in fact, it is window with mullions and muttons to, to be on the colonial style type window. So I think that's what that question represents. Um, the material that we're talking about, um, the dorm, each of the gable ends of the buildings have slightly recessed gables so that there's a small ledge, if you will, along the front of the gable which will have asphalt shingles, which is pretty typical of a colonial type structure. And we did identify it on this edge and this detail, but we didn't show it right here. And I think that's where the comment is coming from. But in fact, right at that edge, right along there, there's about a uh, 18 inch ledge, which will have two or three rows of asphalt shingles on it. Mm -hmm. So I think that's what that comment is. Okay, and uh, number 11 on the, um, <clears throat> checklist. The applicant has submitted details for many aspects of the project. However, there is no construction detail for the concrete pa papers in the plaza or the mortarless retaining wall located on the I think the if you look on sheet C300, you will find the detail. For the pavers, it's on the lower right-hand corner of the sheet. Uh, there is a detail there. Um, and on further up in the sheet, do you have a second?
C three hundred. I believe it is. I'm going to check it just to make sure I don't get the wrong thing. It's the seventh sheet back. It's identified in C three hundred. Typical sections and details. On the lower, just above the title block, the lower right hand corner, is a section called typical section for unit papers uh, built up. So seven this, from the front? Seven from the front. Seven from the front. It's a seven sheet. Mark sheet eight of eleven, but I think when I counted, I counted seven. <coughs> Preceding phase, I believe L2 shows, shows some wall sections of the small wall that, that you're referencing, which is the small wall around the plaza. That's identified as sheet L2, which is 7 of 11, upper left hand corner. First of the size of the drawings, it's a little complicated. It's, 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 it's. I have to say it's not on our plans. On sheet L2? Joe, when I wrote, I believe that, that Nancy is referencing the memo that I wrote to the board. Um, do you have a copy of that? Yes, I do now. Yep. The um, but it, it's on this set right here. Right? The reference to the wall is the retaining wall that's going around the parking lot behind <coughs> the police station, not the one in the front. Um, there is no retaining wall behind the police station. Well, we have a plan that shows a small retaining wall that's in the southeast corner of the parking lot. Over here. That's one. Yes, okay, by the stairs. I would agree, yes, that's not on there. We'll have to do that for the final submission. Yeah, that detail has not been worked out for the stairs themselves. It's just, it's a, uh, what's happening there, there's approximately two foot of change in grade between the parking lot um, and the sidewalk. So in order for the convenience of uh, the users, we've added a small set of stairs there, which will require a small wall. But it's, there's only, I think, three or four risers across there. So it's not really, quote, unquote, a retaining wall. But the detail is not showing on the wall. Further comments and questions from the board? Thank you, Nancy. I can handle something very quick for you in regards to solid waste disposal, trash disposal. Is the town going to continue as they are now? having the custodial staff from the high school pick it up and store it inside the building, or are you going to have a dumpster? Um, based on the written report that was submitted, the uh, Public Works picks it up three times a week from each of the two buildings, and they're responsible for moving and removing it. So it'll be handled in the same method. Go ahead, David. So there's no provisions outside the building perimeter for storage of waste? That's correct. It's not needed. I believe it's paragraph 12 in the little manual, the little booklet that we gave you, identifies that Bob Malley's and his department have agreed to pick it up three times a week as they have, as they are currently are.
It appears some members of the board are doing some research, so I'm just patiently Sorry. waiting. <clears throat> Go ahead, Karen. It doesn't look as though you have submitted a formal landscaping preservation plan, even though a lot of the plan plantings remain on the plan. Um, is it your intent to provide one at a final submission, or is? I have to refer to John Jacobson. I'm not sure I know what the landscape preservation plan is. Uh, my name is John Jacobson, also with Oast Associates. We have not and, and don't intend to unless it's required. What we have done is if you refer to L2 again, which is sheet 7 of 11, um, we've shown our existing vegetation preservation methods in note form, which covers our, our typical preservation methods, and also in our specifications we'll address any uh, any types of physical barriers, which right now we don't see as being required. I think that will be addressed. I think the only potential would be out in, in this area where there will be ledge removal. That's something that will have to be determined as we get into the construction phase. Um, but other than that, we're not planning to. And what you see for the methods shown on this plan are, are the same as we use for the, the uh, public works facility out in Gulf Coast. So unless required, we, we are not planning to submit a, a separate preservation plan. Further comments from the board? Prepared to accept one, Nancy? Uh, we ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of the town's papers for the site plan review of the construction of a new police station and conver conversion of the existing public works building to the new fire station all located in the vicinity of 325 Ocean House Road and Jordan Way be deemed complete. Motion has been made to the board. Is there a second? Second. A second from Mr. Parkhurst. Further discussion of the motion before the board? Hearing none, those in favor of the application being deemed complete, please raise your right hand. All those opposed? It is unanimous. Thank you. <clears throat> There's a need to schedule a public hearing. Any discussion by the board before we entertain a motion? I Steve? A, uh, oh, I'm sorry. I, go ahead. I was going to make a motion. Go ahead, Nancy. I, I have a question, and I, I don't know if it's appropriate at, the, at this time, but I, I'd like to know the timeline on the three... Uh, Enterprise is the public works, the building, the um, fire building, and the police building. Okay. Um, and we're going on memory here because I don't have it written down. But um, under contract with uh, the contractor for the public works building, their obligation is to be complete by November of this year. We're anticipating that to be expedited a little bit, but by contract, we have to acknowledge that it could take till November. As soon as that building is occupied, we expect Public Works to take a month to move into the building. So that would, that would mean that by December, they would vacate the existing structure, and we can start the new construction within that. 
Um, prior to that, though, in order to meet the obligations that the community has made on the E911, we are going to commence in uh, April for bidding for construction in May and June for the E911 building, which is the 272 square foot here. So that starting in, uh, assuming we get all the approvals, of course, starting in um, May, uh, we expect to build this, this addition in May and June so they can move equipment in in June, July, so it's occupiable and meets the 911 requirements. But that's the only piece. Um, there's a couple of minor modifications inside the building uh, in order to do that. We have to build an equipment room to meet the state's requirements for the 911, uh, but that's going to front wind up inside the building, so you won't see that outside. But so if we go back to the the schedule. Um, October of this year, we anticipate going out for bids for these two buildings, um, which uh, with the bids received on and around October 26th. November 7th, we anticipate having selected uh, a contractor who is going to be doing both. We're putting both projects out as one project, two, both buildings out as one project. Uh, so that we anticipate that the actual contractor will be selected and a contract signed on or about November 7th. November 15th, this building is vacated by Public Works and they move out to Gulf Crest Farms. November 20th, um, the renovations that, that uh, are necessary begin to take place in this area. Uh, February 15th of 2001, we anticipate that this renovation is complete. Uh, February 16th through the 28th, the fire department and the police, the balance of the fire department and the police department move over to this building. March 2001, we anticipate that the, um, you actually own and take occupancy within this building. Uh, the, 20, uh, the 5th through the 23rd of March 2001, we do the demolition of the existing building. March 26 through 2001, we begin new construction of the police department. September, it is anticipated to be completed, uh, September 28th. And then uh, by October 1st of 2001, you have the dedication and actually occupy and are using the, the new police building. And that's the this, this schedule that's been established based on um, the contracts that we already have in place for the Gulf Press Farms. If that can be expedited, which we all think it will, then the others could be expedited as well. Thank but that's what it much. basically is. <clears throat> Thank you, Nancy. It was a good question. Steve, you had a motion or a question? Uh, <clears throat> is it appropriate to make a motion for both public hearing and then open up for discussion? Yes. Okay. Um, be it for the further order that on the above application be tabled. Oh, well, we don't want to do that yet. Should that come last? Want to do it last? Very well. We'll table it for a while until it lasts. <clears throat> the application is still open for general discussion. Any further questions, concerns by the board members? I have some comments and questions. Right ahead, Steve. Um, I know you've heard this before. I'm still <clears throat> um, displeased with the, uh, the clavers in the second story of this building. I think it's going to be a big mistake to not break it up with something. Uh, I had suggested windows at one point. That seemed to fall on deaf ears because here we are with, again, nothing, just clavers. Um, let's see. I think it would be a very good idea to have a, um, a very clear sketch plan um, published in the Cape Courier and invite public comment. I think we'll find how the townspeople feel about this, this sort of building being built in the town center. Um, <clears throat> that's one suggestion. Another question I have, we just went through uh, some work in the town center with new esplanades, new sidewalks, new street lights. And flipping through the book here, we have street lights that don't even come close. They don't even look remotely similar to what's in the town center. I don't get it. 
and they, they look, I don't know, they just look so dissimilar to what's in the town center, and this is in the town center. Why, why the change? Well, number one, on your first comment about the, the windows, we did, it did not fall on deaf ears. We did spend a considerable amount of time trying to come up with elevations that we thought were acceptable and presentable to you. And because of the scale of that gable, we don't think that the windows fall within a, a reasonable aesthetic value. And to put windows up there into a big open space where it's, it's not a usable attic or, or anything like that, uh, we didn't think that was appropriate, so we didn't modify the plan to show the windows. But I, I don't want you to think we just flat out ignored you, because we did not. Um, on the, um, the uh, lighting fixtures, uh, one of the comments I kept hearing in the workshop was that we wanted to look like a police building. So what I tried to do was select two fixtures, one on either side of the front. There's only two of them. One on either side of the front entranceway that are a round globe that is very typical of what um, um, police structures might have in front of them for the last 50 or 60 years. Yes, they are different than the colonial fixtures along here, but we were trying to, to draw attention to the building that it is a little different. This is a police building. This is not the town um, municipal building. It's a police building. And then the other th four or five fixtures that you'll find throughout the building uh, in the back end here, um, they were picked to be a little bit different because they offer better um, lighting characteristics so that we can uh, not throw light beyond the, the town, or beyond the property line, which is according to your ordinance, I believe it's about a half a foot candle. And yet it still had that same roundage f fixture to match what we selected for the front entranceway. So we were not trying to drag the front of the town center aesthetics down Jordan way towards the school because no matter where you go along here, sooner or later it's violated because the, town, the school doesn't have any of the same type of fixtures. They go on to box type fixtures and most of the fixtures in the back of this are box type, uh, shoe box type fixtures on poles. So what we tried to do to summarize it is keep the town center lights. There's one right here that's exactly the same as you have out in the front of the the town center complex. We picked two fixtures on either side of the little plaza that have a round globe to them to set in a wrought iron uh, frame to a look like a police department. And then we picked the, build, the fixtures around the back end of the police department to give you better photo, photometrics for the parking lot, uh, but still have that similar roundish mm. globe shape without annoying neighbors. So that's where that selection came from. Um, <clears throat> it seems to me I recollect that there was a lot of discussion about saving money and cost um, when we first saw this at workshop. And I'm looking at the plans, and um, there seems to be a huge amount of granite in this thing, um, which is if I'm not mistaken, more expensive than concrete. Um, and I, I just, it seems to be sort of at odds with itself. Um, it seems that the building has been right from day one. And it's now, you know, has, in theory, I guess one kind of siding. We have brick, we have granite. Um, but then we have the clavers. They just don't seem to go with anything. And, but getting back to the cost thing, we seem to have a lot of granite uh, arches and uh, granite columns and uh, a huge amount of granite going around the whole um, base of the building that I can tell. Yeah, it's, every side has you know granite um, base. And I'm just. <clears throat> I guess I'm sort of concerned that this is, uh, again, at odds with its original uh, story of, you know, trying to keep costs under control, et cetera. Uh, it just doesn't seem to do that. So that's just a comment. You don't need to answer it. Uh, but I would really like to see this thing in Cape Courier and invite public comment. It would be interesting to see what the council thinks. Thank you, Steve. <clears throat> Further comments from board members? David? 
have a couple of comments. Um, there's a tower existing at the police station now, I think. That's correct. Where is that going to be? It's going to be removed. Um, the existing tower falls somewhere over in this area here. Um, there's no longer going to be a need for it. There is an existing tower on the fire station that uh, we're going to keep. Actually, we're going to relocate it so it doesn't interfere with the future for the expansion of this building. But it's going to be still building mounted. Uh, it's going to be on the building here. And the antennas that are needed for the dispatch will all be on that tower. So this tower will no longer be required. So you're losing a tower. Okay. Uh, the other comment I had, we discussed it at the last meeting. Um, there's not going to be any uh, mechanical equipment located outside the perimeter of the building at this point. Uh, there's not going to be any mechanical equipment on the north side. I have not ruled out, uh, nor can we at this point, that it might fall on the small esplanade between the building and the sidewalk. But our goal is to have it into a small uh, gallery on the second level, basically a second level, in this area on the back of the building. Um, but, and I had our mechanical engineers out there again today, and we still think that that's pretty successful. But I wouldn't want to commit that there's not going to be any anywhere, just because of the of cost of being involved. But the, we have committed to the community that there will not be any on the residential side on the north side of the building, period. I, I have another comment that I think I have to agree with Steve relative to the lighting. I'd like to see that revisited in that foyer area out front to try to blend a little better with what's in the town center at the present time. That's my opinion. You don't need a comment on that. Um, I, I would like to see a little more information on the landscaping um, so that we can see it a little clearer than it is presently shown. Those are my only comments at this point. Thank you, David. <clears throat> Other members of the board? Comments or questions? Mark? Uh, one of the things that I uh, looked for and was wondering if you might be able to, uh, maybe you might even know it right now, is the, the typical light is on a pole of, uh, of some height. Do you, do you know what that height is or could you give yes, that in information further uh, on? Well, you know, I, for it. I have it on the door for um, On C300. Right okay. It's on C300, I think. Is it? <clears throat> and do you have a wattage for those for those lights? I believe that would be your Volt. <clears throat> Those are the ones out front. Yeah, uh, no. I'll have to get that at point. the back of the building, you have some wall packs planned, and uh, does that mean that uh, there will be there will not be wall packs on the other sides of the buildings? That's correct. There will not be on any of the other three sides. The only place we have them on the back here is for security for the entrance to the police building. Uh, and one of the other things that I noticed was uh, there's a new generator being planned uh, that would be adjacent to the fire station. Yes. And would you be able to provide some noise information on that and its frequency of use? Um, yes, I can't tonight. But yes, we could be able to do that. I can tell you that it'll have to be started every week in order to be tested in order to meet the requirements. Um, but the, what we're trying to do is make sure it's here so there is none on this building so that any of the noise would be adjacent to the commercial area rather than towards the residential. But it will be a, 
a uh, propane or diesel type engine. <coughs> I don't know the size of it at this point. It's not engineered. No, that's fine. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. <clears throat> according, to the, according to the plan, um, the light poles, I believe, in the front are 20 feet tall. <clears throat> um, that's the ones in the back. I don't know that we identified the ones in the front, but I would think they're going to be in the 10 to, 10 to 12 foot range for these two. Okay. <clears throat> these two up front are strictly for the, the, the plaza area to give provide lighting to the plaza area. <clears throat> um, just to expand on my Cape Courier thing, is it possible to get <clears throat> this sketch from the Cape Courier and ask people to come to the public hearing with any comment? The front elevation was published in the most recent Cape Courier. Um, How busy I've been. Just saw it today myself. <clears throat> Yes. If, if you do get in, uh, if you do start looking at any simplification, <coughs> the sort of uh, the, were the columns broken by vertical stripes of granite? Is that what yes. you had planned? The columns are roughly 20 I inches know. square. So in order to help reduce the mass and increase the aesthetics of the height, there was a small recess in that. Uh, that's, that's one that I was just kind of not sure as to whether it might just look like a stripe, a racing stripe. And, and not something that actually has some relief to it. Would that, would that actually no, it actually has relief a relief to it? Relief. It's about two, two and a half inches deep. Oh, it's almost okay. a full brick oh, okay. depth. Yes. Thanks. Thank you, Mark. Further comments before we move on to make a motion for scheduling a public hearing? Any suggestions for the applicant in preparing for the next meeting? John? Sorry. Um, just occurred to me, I believe you were talking before about the access down Jordan Way if uh, children were walking back and forth. And then you have the driveways coming out of either side. Uh, in here? Yeah. Well, sight lines on that, did you look at that? De yes, very definitely, and it's basically a straight line. This is, there's a very nominal change of grade across here, and that's one of the reasons why we're removing some of the ledge in here to get this down so that the police cars that's exiting have better sight lines across the sidewalk. And that's why this little retaining wall that was referred to, there's only three or four riser heights in there, so there's not much change of grade. Mm -hmm. So the sight lines are pretty good. Thank you. Any questions or requests for information from the applicant? <clears throat> I had a quick question. Go right ahead, sir. Uh, David's comment about wanting to see more detail in the landscape. I just want to make sure I was clear on what specifically you were looking for, in addition to what we've shown. I think there needs to be some definition of what's existing and what's going to be what's new, and clarify that a little bit. Okay. Thank you. And perhaps on the plan, uh, what construction guidelines you're going to have as far as protecting what is existing. That may seem a very small concern, but we did lose some landscaping during the renovation and reconstruction of the middle school. We lost all of it, didn't we? Good part of it. <laughs> Yeah, you know, the the risk is less here because we're, this is the end of the existing building, so that we're not going beyond that in that direction. The only area may be back in the back end where the tower is now, but there's there's no landscaping back there except for lawn. And on the front facade, um, except for the flagpole that's being relocated over to this site, um, there's very little landscaping on the existing Jordan Way side. This is all new uh, earth on this side. For the building. So all of this is new. So I think the risk is pretty slow, but we are low, but we will uh, uh, identify what precautions we're taking to save existing. Thank you. Any further comments before we move on to a motion? 
Steve. One last uh, try here. Is there anything that can be done differently where the collaborators are now? Is there a different type of uh, treatment that can be <clears throat> at least drawn like in a sketch type of thing and presented at the next meeting that maybe will be an alternative? Yes, there is. Um, I have been taking things that there are sunburst type designs where you can use with clapboards. Um, I've done a, a, an elevation with that and it looks kind of artificial uh, because of the scale of it, but I'll be glad to let you voice one more opinion <laughs> at the next meeting. Um, the, uh, as I said, we did look at putting some uh, windows up in there, up in the gable, or some uh, louvers, uh, or other type of panel or something up there to try and reduce the scale of it to help ease your mind. But I don't think that it's working. <clears throat> How about brick? Uh, I mean, it, it's, it's you know, your your comment about five minutes ago was about the the budget, and we are really concerned. In the original project, all four, all three sides were going to be clapboard, and we have taken the leap with the building committee and uh, with the users and the town manager to go ahead and change all of that to brick um, in order to uh, be more accommodating to the town center requirements. Um, I, I think that by adding brick up there, it's not just the cost of the brick, it's the support for it, because all those gables are not in the same plane as the front of the building, so they're going to take some lintels or some kind of bearing support to take care of them. Um, uh, you know, I took your comment about the granite around the base. That item there is put in as a water table to protect the building, so for lawn, lawn care and for snow maintenance, uh, and so that uh, on the north side of the building, if you have any standing snow, um, it's not laying right against the brick that would cause it to deteriorate. So we brought that up about 20 inches above the floor line to help protect it. Um, it is a veneer. It's not intended to be, you know, 14 inches thick. That's going to cost you a fortune. But it is a lot, not a lot, but it is more expensive than concrete, obviously. But I think that it's an appropriate decision for the climatic conditions and the, the environment of the building. Thank you. Mark? Have you uh, had any thoughts or on the direction of a color scheme for the building? One sees a lot of brick buildings with white trim or brick buildings with creamy colored or... Yep, purple. as a matter of fact, we've been working with that. Um, I didn't want to get into that deep into the aesthetics of it. Um, so we'll we be at that point maybe by the time Yeah, you know, I guess it depends on when the next meeting is, but yes, we are looking at some softer bricks um, on the the beige or gray sides so that harmonize between the town center building, the town hall, this building that is in the yellows, and the building, what we can do with this building to paint it and maintain also the existing split face block. Um, I've already done uh, some sketches on using a, uh, a red brick that matches the school building, uh, which works very well with the granite and the, uh, and the clapboards, so that, yes, we are working on multiple. A lot, of, a lot of uh, civic buildings were done out of a yellow or a buffish color brick because it's cheaper than <coughs> granite. Or biggest marble, biggest issue in today's world is the availability of the material. But, yeah. Yeah. Okay. That'd be great. <coughs> Steve, we will see the entire package prior to final approval as far as colors of materials, etc. Correct. I don't know your requirements. I guess so, but I don't know. I think that's very important. Um, I don't know if that's the building committee's prerogative. I'd be glad to present whatever they approve. But I don't. Nancy. This is the public building. Buildings. Yes. Three. Yeah. And. Uh, <clears throat> The planning board is concerned that we know the details. Oh, I agree. I'll present whatever I'm told to present to you, to be honest with you. Um, I, I don't have a problem telling you. There are no secrets here. That's how, how we got to where we are by the workshops and what changes we have made to the building. So, um, 
you know, whatever we can do, we'll all work together on that. Mr. McGovern. Just briefly on the color issue, uh, Michael McGovern, town manager. Uh, my experience with building a number of municipal buildings is, is once the project gets going and we get into submittals with, with the various contractors, that often the colors aren't a match to what had been discussed earlier. And I'd be very concerned, since the planning board doesn't usually require the specificity of color, that you begin to do that not only with this project, but with other projects as well, because from a staff point of view, trying to uh, you know, work through any project and to try to get the color in exact uh, con uh, conformance with the planning board is difficult because so much of that does depend on availability. And for example, even in the pool, uh, we had some issues of once we got involved with it and some minor changes that we needed to be made, there was some incompatibility of trim. And I would hate to think of every project having to come back to the planning board for an amendment on a color change uh, whenever the trim was changed a little bit or, or the different shade of a, a particular color. I think that would be a departure from uh, what the planning board usually does. That said, we'd be happy to share with you what we're thinking. And you know, if you want to say this is it, we'll, we'll deal with that. But uh, I think that would be a departure from past practice of the planning board. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. David? Well, Mike, I think it would be in the best interest to, to let the board see some rough ideas because we're charged a little bit with maintaining a consistency in the center of town. And I just, yeah, we'd be happy I to share it with you. I just get nervous about six months from now that this isn't a color match to what we saw. I don't think that's really the <clears throat> intention here. Just to show you, we don't have any secrets. We are trying to work a little bit, but I have brought some of the schemes with us. This one represents a lighter brick. Could you uh, move the one on the on your left, this one represents a lighter brick, um, a lighter trim, a light, a little bit lighter uh, clapboard on the staining. This one represents a much darker red brick, typical with a, a colonial type structure, with uh, the gray granite and the cedar stain type trim. Um, but these are just studies that we've started to work with. We haven't presented to the building committees or the users to get their opinion um, as to where it's going to go. But we are in that direction, and that's, that's what we're trying to help uh, everybody with. Mark, you had a comment? Uh, one of the, just to give you a little overview, the, the, last, uh, the last project that came through uh, sort of prominently on the, on, uh, on the street uh, was the Tinsman Office uh, Health Club. And what we what we approached the approach that we did on that was we, uh, we approved the delegation of the of the uh, review of color to be quote compatible with other buildings in town to staff. Uh, given uh, the fact that this is a building uh, you know by the town for the town, uh, you having the opportunity to have this not be approved by staff for its compatibility. Under the, or, under the new town center ordinance, uh, I think that the opportunity to have it sort of officially blessed by the planning board would be something that would be of advantage to the project as a whole. And uh, you know, I don't think anybody here would want to know the specific make and model of brick of the sort of direction you're going in and, and commit to that. I think it would, would be something that would be good for, for the whole thing. I have a whole bunch of bosses. If you get there. I have a whole bunch of bosses on this project, but uh, as the whole town as a whole, as well as the building committee, as well as the users, and as well as, as you, and then we're also at the mercy of the low bidder when we get down to that point. So, I mean, we will share everything that we're, we have available because it is a public building, it is public information. Um, so, you know, I don't want anybody to think that we're trying to pull the wool over anybody's eyes because it is a public building and everybody has access to all the information that we make available. All the building committee meetings have been open to the public, so uh, there are no, no secrets in a small town. Thank you. Steve, you have a further comment? <clears throat> Just one last comment. It, it is a public building, but more importantly, it is the first 
really knew anything we've seen in the town center zone, and this is going to be the leader, if you will, of what may follow. And I think it's very important that the town set a really good example for what we've all been hoping, I think, will be some commercial development in the town center zone. Um, this is the first notable change. Nothing else that's been approved has been built uh, for various reasons. And I think this is a, <clears throat> a building I sense is being built to last, I would think, at least 50 or 60 years. Um, so if it comes out badly, we're stuck with it for 50 or 60 years. If it comes out great, then it's going to be a real positive thing for the next 50 or 60 years. So, you know, that being said, it's a very important uh, building, not just because it's public, but because of where the public building is. That's all I'm going to say. Thank you, Steve. I'd like to entertain a motion at this time. Okay. Be it further order that the above application be tabled to the regular April 18th, 2000 meeting of the Planning Board, at which time a public hearing will be held. Second. Thank you, Nancy. There's been a motion made and seconded. Is there further comment or discussion from board members? Hearing none, all those in favor, please raise your right hand. Any opposed? It is unanimous. Thank you. Thank you to the applicant and town department heads. There's nothing further to come before the board. A motion to adjourn is in order. <clears throat> so moved. Thank you, Steve. Second. 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 Thank you, Nancy. All those in favor? We are adjourned. <laughs>